Hey learners, welcome back to our channel. Today we are wrapping up unit two of our data structure series with a super important topic called collision resolution techniques in hash tables. This is going to be essential for understanding how data is efficiently stored and retrieved even when our hash functions face collisions. Let's dive right in. Let's start by understanding what a collision in hash table means. Imagine you have a function that maps different values to specific slots in a table like assigning seats to people in a stadium. Now if two different people both get assigned to the same seat that's a collision. In hash tables this means two different keys generate the same hash value and end up at the same index. Collisions are common issue especially as the table fills up and can slow down data retrieval if not handled properly. So let's look at some techniques to efficiently resolve these collisions and keep our hash table more organized. There are two primary categories for handling collisions in hash tables. First we have separate chaining also called as open hashing. This technique uses linked list to store multiple items at a single index making it easy to handle multiple keys mapping to the same spot. The second approach is open addressing also called as closed hashing where we search for an empty slot within the table itself when a collision occurs. This method avoids, avoids using extra structure but requires strategic probing to find the next free slot. Under open addressing, we use technique like linear probing, quadratic probing and double hashing to manage collisions. These techniques each have their own unique way of finding open slots and minimizing the impact of clustering. Here the image shows the classification of collision resolution techniques into two types that is separate chaining and open addressing and in the open addressing we have again three methods that is linear probing, quadratic probing and double hashing. Separate chaining is a simple and effective method to handle collisions. Here each index in the hash table doesn't just store a single item but actually holds a linked list. If multiple keys hash to the same index, they are simply added to the list at that slot. It's like having a waiting line where each person joins the queue if the initial slot is taken. This approach works well if collisions are frequent because linked list can grow to store as many elements as needed at any index. For example, if keys 15, 25 and 35 all map to index 5, they are added to a linked list at that position, making it easy to access or add additional items without needing extra memory. Now, with open addressing, we keep everything within the hash table itself. So instead of creating list, we store each item directly in the table by propping for an empty slot whenever there is a collision. This method is beneficial for saving space since we don't need extra structures like linked link list. However, it requires careful probing strategies to avoid too many collisions and manage clustering. In the following slides, we will go over the three main types of probing techniques in open addressing that is linear probing, quadratic probing and double hashing. Linear probing is the simplest probing technique in open addressing. Here how it works. If a collision happens, we just check the next slot in sequence one position at a time. Until we find an empty slot, it's easy to implement but can lead to something called primary clustering. This means the clusters of filled slots form slowing down the search and insert times as the table fills up. For example, if two items hash to index 2, one of them goes to index 3. And if index 3 is taken, we move to index 4. It's straightforward but not idle in cases of high collisions. Quadratic probing offers a way to avoid the clustering issue we see in linear probing. Instead of moving just one slot forward, 
it checks positions based on quadratic formula for example after a collision it checks the slot 1 power 2 then 2 power 2 then 3 power 2 positions away this increases the spread and helps avoid large clusters forming around a single index however quadratic probing can sometimes struggle to find an open slot if the table is too full and it may require extra handling to ensure we don't get stuck in cycles it's effective in moderate table loads though because it reduces the clustering double hashing is an advanced technique that tackles clustering effectively by using two hash functions instead of one when a collision happens with the first hash function we apply a second hash function to find the next slot the second function generates a unique probe sequence based on the key helping to avoid clusters entirely double hashing is one of the most efficient probing methods since it minimizes both primary and secondary clustering however it can be a bit slower because it requires calculating hash functions but it's an excellent choice when you want to keep a low load factor and avoid the clustering seen in linear and quadratic probing rehashing is a way to handle collisions when the table is almost full or when the load factor gets too high instead of just handling more collisions we actually expand the hash table by increasing its size often doubling it and rehashing all items into this larger table it's similar to moving into a larger apartment when you are running out of space this helps keep the table organized and ensures we are likely to encounter collisions as there are more slots available rehashing is powerful but computationally expensive since we have to reassign all items finally extensible hashing is a dynamic approach perfect for managing very large data sets instead of just making the table bigger each time extensible hashing uses a directory that grows and shrinks based on the data size it's flexible and can adjust as you add or remove items keeping the structure efficient and saving memory for instance if a bucket overflows a new bucket is added and the directory expands as needed it's like a hash table that automatically manages its own growth idle when data size varies a lot and that's a wrap we have covered all the essential collision resolution techniques for hash tables this video wraps up unit 2 so i hope you have learned a lot and feel ready to for the next video that is unit 3 with even more topics on data structures so if you are finding the series helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe and share it with your friends thanks for watching i will see you all in my next video